I think like how quickly we discount other people because of how they work, how they drive, hello, <laughs> or how they treat us, right? We discount other people. We, we, we are so quick to just think about ourselves. And if you get in my way, man, it, it, it's, it's problems. You see, we live in a culture where we have to earn respect, we have to earn praise, and we have to earn honor. Very much so in the place that we live, you have to earn these things, right? But I think that as believers, as Christians, as, as people who carry the heart of this house, we've been talking about family values here, I think that our perspective on honor, it's one of our values, it's what we're going to be talking about today, I think that our perspective should be vastly different than how other people see honor. Where we look at honor and we see, well, you have to earn it, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do something for me before you can earn this thing, I think that Jesus sets a, a very clear and a very different example for us to follow. And so I'm going to be in uh, John, the Gospel of John, chapter 13. It's going to be the main text we kind of camp out in today. We'll, we'll hop around into some other places, but I want to read this and then, uh, and then pray and we'll get into it. You see, I think what's so cool about the Gospel of John as you're turning there is that it really looks at the miracles and the divinity of Jesus. Each of the Gospels kind of have their own flavor. You know, Matthew was, was all about connecting the Jewish heritage to Jesus and how he came to fulfill that. You have Luke, who was so worried and so concerned about uh, that message being presented to a Gentile group and community. And in John, John is just all about miracles. Pastor Mike said it today, we, we still believe that God works miracles. We still believe in miracles. It's another one of our values we'll get to a little bit later, but that's what John is talking about in a lot of uh, his perspective. And here in chapter 13, Jesus teaches an incredible lesson in modeling how honor works in the kingdom and why it's important for us to follow it. This is what it says. I'm going to kind of jump around in just a few, uh, just a bit of, of, of the passage here. I'm going to start in verse 3. It says this in the NIV. It says, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and that he was returning to God. This is on the last night that Jesus was alive before his, his death. So he got up in verse 4, he got up from the meal and he took off his outer clothing and he wrapped a towel around his waist. And after that, he poured water into a basin and he began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. It skips down into verse 12 and it says that when Jesus had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and he returned to his place do you understand what I have done to, to you and for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no serious, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now you know these things. You will be blessed if you do them. Let's pray this morning. Lord Jesus, I just ask that you would just continue to meet us and speak to us this morning. I pray that you would speak this, this word through me, Lord, that you would take what I have prepared, you would take the, the things that, that you know on, uh, uh, that are on our hearts to, to speak as a pastoral team. Lord, I pray that you would just say exactly what it is you want to say, and I pray that you would just tune ears to be able to listen to exactly what it is that, that you want them to hear and you want them to apply to their life. Lord, we thank you that we have a, a code and a system of values that we can look to Lord, and I thank you that, that we have the opportunity to take a look at, at, at honor today in your word. Lord, I ask that you would just be with us through the rest of our time together. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. amen. So like I said, we're going to jump around a, a little bit, uh, some other places, so don't put your Bible away just yet. 
But I do think that from this main passage, there, is three, there are three things that we can kind of apply or learn about honor. A little, uh, little throat stuff, so Northwest plug, it's through our internship, and whoop, whoop, all good stuff. Anyway, there are three things that I think we can really apply and, and look at when it comes to honor and, and honor in the kingdom as, as Jesus modeled it. And that is this, that, that honor is actually selfless. The very definition of honor is to place a high respect or esteem on other people. At its very definition, it puts other people above us. So it can't be self-serving. Honor cannot be self-serving. It has to be a selfless thing. You see, the desire to be superior and to be honored above other people is actually completely opposite of a Christ-like attitude. It's completely opposite of how we are supposed to live our lives as Christians modeled here through Jesus. Jesus was reminding the disciples in that moment that there was no reason to be puffed up by their spirituality, by their character, by their accomplishments, by their calling. I mean, Jesus said he was the Lord and the teacher of the disciples in this group of friends, and here he is washing their stinky, nasty feet. He took this, 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 this perspective of a servant, this, this place of a servant. He was saying that none of this stuff matters. It's selfless. I think that it's hard if you know people, and I, and I know none of us do. Don't, don't be pointing around, okay? But I know that, that we can see how hard it is for selfish people to give honor to people. It's hard for a selfish person to give honor to another person even when they deserve it. Even when that person deserves honor, if we are so self-consumed and so worried about ourselves and so inwardly focused, we'll never even be able to give honor even where it's due. But I think that we can all agree whether you're selfish or not or you know selfish people or you don't, I think that we can all agree that it's much harder to give anyone honor when they don't deserve it. It's much harder to to give people honor when they've done nothing to earn it. It's much harder to to serve people, to love people, to to be uh, uh, underneath people when, when when, when they don't deserve to be shown honor. There's a, a passage in 1 Samuel chapter 26 David has been anointed as king. God God has has anointed him and chosen him as king. And Saul was still the king at the time, and he was kind of getting worried. So they used to have this really great relationship and this great friendship. And all of a sudden, Saul starts to lose his marbles a little bit. He says, okay, well, if he's anointed king and I kill him, then I get to be king still. And so he starts to, to, to try to go after David, and David is running for his life, and there's actually a multiple times where David could have killed Saul and just taken the throne. But I want to read what, what happens in 26, 1 Samuel chapter 26, verse 9. It says, David said to Abishai, don't destroy him. Who can lay a hand on the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? As surely as the Lord lives, he said, the Lord himself will strike him or his time will come and he will die or he will go into battle and perish. But the Lord forbid that I should lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. And he says, now get the spear and the water jug that are near his head and let's go. You're like, okay, great. He just stole his stuff. (laughs) What he actually took was the, 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 uh, the, the um, spiritual aspect of, of Saul's life and Saul's sustainability as king. In that moment, David had a perfect opportunity. As a matter of fact, Abishai, David's, David's servant, was like, man, I will do this right now. Try Jesus, right? Like, let's go. 
David said, no, 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 we're not going to do that. You see, David saw this opportunity to kill Saul not as a chance to, to go up in, in his rank or to take what was his. I mean, he had been anointed king. Why wouldn't you? He didn't see that opportunity. Instead, he saw a trial and an opportunity to show honor to someone who God had, had, had placed an anointing on at a certain time. David demonstrated restraint. And not only did he demonstrate restraint, but he actually showed goodwill. How many people would say if you spare somebody's life, you're showing goodwill to that person, right? <laughs> he had the perfect opportunity to exact vengeance. I mean, Saul was making David's life horrible. He was on the run constantly. And at that moment, he could have stepped in and could have ended it all and stepped into what God was actually calling him to. But he didn't because he knew, David knew, that it was not his role to actually make things happen. It was his role to honor people. It wasn't his role to step in and do what he thought God was telling him to do. It was to honor people that were put above him. Even if that had it long expired past this expiration date, he was going to honor Saul. See, David was assured that God would move Saul and he would step into the kingship at God's time. I think that that is so much of what honor does is, is a lot of times we want to go in and we want to do stuff or we want to tell people off. We're going to tell people how we feel. And what honoring people does, it, it not only helps our heart, but it actually glorifies God because it says, you know what, I'm not going to take this into my own hands. I'm going to honor people. I'm going to love people. I'm going to serve people. It's very selfless. David didn't presume to take God's plan into his own hands and do things in his own way. See, David knew that if God intended for something to happen, he would bring it to pass. I mean, he gave three examples right off the bat. This is going to happen, or this is going to happen, or this is going to happen. I don't need to kill him. It was all in God's timing, and he recognized that in that moment, honor was the answer. Even though he knew he could have killed Saul and stepped into that, that, that moment of, 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 of kingship, he didn't. I think... Honor being this selfless thing, if we can change our perspective to start to see that as something that is selfless, something where we don't uh, expect anything. A lot of times we have superficial honor where we honor people in order for them to see how we honor them and then they'll honor us by giving us a promotion or something. But a lot of times we show honor to people because that's what's right to do and we have absolutely no intention of truly honoring that person. We're just doing it because that's what's right on paper. But I think if we can start to really understand the definition of honor actually elevating people above ourselves and we understand that in all cases, honor authentically will never put us at the center. Honor, when it's authentic, will never place us as the, as the focal point. I'm going to be honest with you. Honor won't even feel good all the time. Honor won't even feel good. Honor won't even feel like it's the right thing to do. Like I said, how many people have ever been in a situation where you want to tell somebody exactly what they need to know? How many people got a boss? You could just tell exactly what they need to know. But in that moment, even when it doesn't feel good, honoring people will bring so much glory to, to God and will speak volumes of the character of us as believers, as, as, as little Christ Christians, as, as followers, as believers. There may be things that the Lord has laid out for us or spoken to us that might not be in his timing yet. So in the waiting, we have to show honor. We have to live with a selfless attitude that says, I will show honor in this situation no matter what. doesn't even matter if God has spoken something to you. If it's not in his timing, show honor in the meanwhile. The second thing is this. One of these definitions of honor that we just have to relearn and rethink about, and that is this, that honor is submission. Honor is selfless, but honor is Submission. In order to honor others, 
We have to submit to people, people who are above us in authority. Remember that definition? To elevate, to, to bring and bestow honor onto people, it's, it's kind of a verb as well. We have to submit as we do this. You see, what Jesus was modeling as he was washing the disciples' feet was that those who would surrender their lives to Christ and follow him would actually receive cleansing. They would actually be able to receive a new life. Listen, if your life is not submitted to Jesus, you don't seek to bring honor to him in every single thing that we do, how would anybody ever know what we have? Honor is is one of the, the most tangible ways that people on the outside can notice that there's something different about us. You see, if we bring honor to, to, to God, we bring honor to, to, to other people through living lives that are submitted to Jesus. But the reason why I think selflessness and submission are two different things is because selflessness means I'm not thinking about myself in the moment. Submission is I'm going to lay my pride down on the long term. I'm going to lay my pride down and I'm going to submit myself to other people who are in authority over me. I'm going to put myself in a place where I'm submitting to to, to people that I need to, to show honor to in that moment. In that section that we didn't read in, in John, Peter actually refuses to be washed by Jesus. He's like, absolutely not. And then he kind of overcorrects when Jesus explains it to him. And he goes, okay, then wash every part of me. In both instances, he really didn't understand. So he was just overcorrecting in all of these ways. Time after time, we know from Scripture, Peter was a knucklehead. (laughs) He just was. In this moment, I would say refusing to be uh, uh, washed by Jesus and have him wash his feet in that moment, he was not being submitted to what Jesus was wanting to do. We have to be submitted. We have to to be able to, to live a life that doesn't even matter what happens. In Matthew 26, 39, just before Jesus was about to be crucified, he went to pray in the garden And it says that going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground. And Jesus prayed, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. You see, Jesus, in this moment, Jesus continually modeled a life of submission. A life of honoring God and honoring others in every single thing that he did. You see, Jesus in his human nature knew what was coming in his death. Jesus wasn't stupid. He knew what was happening and he knew what was going to happen to him. And rightfully so, he said, hey man, uh, backsies? Maybe? No? Okay, all right. He said, not my will, but as you will. Not everything in God's will, not not everything that's possible is in God's will. Not everything that that we think of, man, I, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this, is in God's will. Honor in that moment, submission in that moment was what the Father needed. And Jesus says, hey man, I I don't know if I want to do this, but at the end of the day, it's all about you. Jesus didn't allow his his personal preference or his ambition to conflict with divine command. How many times have we let our personal ambition or our personal feelings or the way that we feel about other people, well, they did me wrong and and, and, and he told, told me something that I didn't need to hear and my boss is being mean to me because I don't even know why. So I'm just going to go tell them off. How many times has our personal ambition or our personal feelings or what we think is right in that moment conflicted with what God is actually calling us to? How many many times do our feelings conflict with what God is calling us in? I would argue that it's a lot because our feelings are not fun. (laughs) 
See, Jesus in this moment modeled and showed what it was like to be completely tempted to let cup, this, this cup pass from him. Completely tempted to say, you know what, I, I mm, don't want to do this. Completely tempted in that moment, but also completely obedient to what the Father had willed. I think in that moment, man, we can be completely tempted to say all, what we feel like is right, to, 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 to be able to just tell people off, to be able to speak freely. I mean, people wish that we could be able to do that, right? So many times in our feelings, man, I just, just, uh. But we have to be completely obedient to the Father's will to, to show honor where, where honor is and isn't due. See, Jesus was more concerned about the spiritual separation way more than a physical death. But even in that, God provided a way for him to sustain through it. If we would live lives that are submitted to God and that honor other people, I believe without a shadow of a doubt that God will sustain us through whatever trial, whatever hardship, whatever thing we're going through. Right. Honor is the answer. He'll give us sustainability if we would do our part and show honor to people, to show honor to God, if for nothing else. You see, as Jesus was washing the disciples' feet, instead of basking in the glow and the power of authority, Jesus emptied himself in that moment. The disciples, as they're getting their feet washed by literally the Messiah, they're still arguing and bickering on who was going to be Jesus' number two. In the moment where Jesus is modeling how to honor and how to live lives that are submitted to God and to other people, they are still worried and so driven by their personal ambition that they can't even see the lesson that Jesus is trying to teach. Man, I think that we have to lose this mentality that if we show honor to people that we'll be elevated. Like, to, 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 I, say, I say that to say, to show if we are motivated to show people honor, and that's our motivation so that we can be elevated, I think we've missed the point. I think true, uh, authentic, uh, uh, honoring lives continually lower ourselves continually submit. I think back to the time that I was uh, living with my parents as a kid, and I knew all the Ten Commandments, right? I knew, I knew Bible stuff. I, I'd come home from Sunday school, and they'd ask me, you know, what'd you learn, or what'd you talk about? I learned to honor my mom and my dad. And then as soon as they'd ask me to do something, it'd be a huge fight. As soon as they would lay down some rules as I got older, uh, no, not doing that. Because in my brain, their rules were illogical and their reasoning and their justification for saying what they were saying or doing what they were doing made no sense to me. So it was easy for me to say, I honor you. But when it actually came to implementation, it didn't happen. Submission is the, is the actual implementation of how we honor people. Submission, living lives that are submitted to God and to other people are, 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 is the way that we honor people. <laughs> if I say that I honor people with my mouth, if I say that I honor my parents with their mouth, by the way, Ten Commandments, Honor your father and mother is the only one of the Ten Commandments that has a blessing attached to it. And I believe wholeheartedly I have shaved years off of my life. No, I'm joking. It's a bit morbid. It's a bit morbid, isn't it? Shows how important it is. If I say that I honor people with my mouth, but I never actually submit to the people that I need to, am I really honoring is it really just enough to say, I honor you? I honor you. I, I, I love you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in it with you. But I never actually live a life that is honoring towards that person. 
I would su submit that, that we're not. <laughs> so if we say that we honor people that God places in authority over us, at our home, at our church, in our workplaces, in politics, If we say that we honor people in all of these areas, but we use every opportunity to buck up against authority, to push back on things, to not live lives that are honored and, and, and submitted to the people that we need to be submitted to, are we really doing it? Now, I'm not saying, don't, don't hear this, don't hear none of it matters and you should just blindly submit to people. I'm not saying that. For sure we have standards. For sure we have values. Absolutely. If there's things to push back on, if there's things to buck up against, go ahead and do it. But if you are using every opportunity to not even listen to the people that are in authority over us, are we really living lives that are honoring people and honoring God? These are things we have to think about. Are we living and honoring people through submission? The last thing is this, is, is that honor is service. You see, like I said earlier, this happened on Jesus' the, the last night of his life. And he did this to show the disciples three things. He washed their feet to show the disciples how much he loved them. To foreshadow his sacrifice on the cross, which I would go and say that that was just the extension of the greatest act of love that we could ever know. But he also did it to convey the truth that people who follow Jesus must humble themselves, live selfless, live submitted, and live in service to other people. We have to serve other people to show honor to them. Servanthood is basic to the model that Jesus shows as he's washing the disciples' feet. He's bringing honor to them. It's basic to that model. And I, would, I was looking and studying and thinking about the book of Acts. Right after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and his ascension, you have the book of Acts in this early church and they had the novel idea that whatever Jesus said, whatever the disciples said, they were going to do. <laughs> How far sometimes we have gotten as, as a church from just the very simple principles that Jesus gave us. See, the early church followed the command to wash each other's feet, even sometimes literally following this command. And look at how the church blew up and expanded. It grew. It, it says in countless times in the book of Acts that daily their numbers grew. Sometimes it was by huge amounts, like when Peter preached in front of the 3,000 and they were saved. Or sometimes it was one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes it was a divine encounter like what Paul had, but daily it was being added to the numbers. God's blessing will always depend on putting his word into action. Let me just say, with any of these values, the ones that we're going to be talking about, if you don't put these things into action, don't expect a blessing to come. Don't expect a, 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 a blessing to come if you are not uh, implementing these things and, and putting them into practice in your own lives, and your own hearts. I think a very tangible way to honor people is to serve people. We honor people through serving people. This is why I think that food service workers and servers at sit-down restaurant deserve the utmost respect. And some of you guys are about to go see some of them. So I said it last time. People say in the food service industry that the worst crowd is Sunday after church. Think about a job of a server, though, what they have to do. How many people ever waited tables, served tables? I did. I loved it. So much fun. I really enjoyed it. I actually did. Like, I'm one of the weird people. 
<laughs> I was a server at uh, Texas Roadhouse in Kentucky. Best place to get a steak. Come on, so good. Still is true here, too. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but how hard it is for people who have served or waited tables. How hard is it to serve people who are rude? People who are inconsiderate. How hard is it to serve people who are entitled and arrogant or pushy or mean? How hard is it to serve people in that, in, 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 in that way? And yet servers still anticipate needs. They get refills on drinks, or they should. <laughs> They're not mean when you have special requests like no mushrooms or onions. <laughs> they don't say no, we're not doing that. Some might. But. Countless times the servers are treated like the worst of the worst. And all they're doing is just waiting on us. Servers don't even ask for a tip because they're not supposed to. I watched, a, I watched a server one time at Texas Roadhouse hold a table hostage because they were going to stiff him. He got fired the next day. But uh, he said, what do you mean you're not going to tip? And he just stood in front of the table. I was like, well, we got to figure something out. <laughs> they had to get, they had to, it's crazy. I say that to say this, what would it look like for the church to adopt that same attitude in helping other people in our community? How would it look for the church like servers at a, at a restaurant to get their uniforms a little dirty? To come in uh, uh, with, with some grease stains and, and, and actually get into the mess a little bit. To show honor to people even when they don't deserve it. Even when people are rude, when people are, 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 are mean, when people are arrogant, when people think that they know how to, uh, how to uh, you know, talk to us. When it comes to sharing our faith or, or having, you know, discussions about Jesus. I don't know about you, that's becoming a little bit more uh, taboo with people. What do you mean, talk about Jesus? I don't want to talk about him. I know what you are. You're one of those Christians. How hard is it to show honor to people who don't deserve it? But I think if we can give honor where honor was and wasn't due, that that is authentically living this model that Jesus so clearly gave us. We have to live lives that honor people because they honor God. We bring honor to people. We have the opportunity to bring honor to people who may have never felt what it feels like to be honored. We have an opportunity to, to, to show honor to people when they don't deserve it. All we have to do is replicate this model that Jesus gave us. And maybe you're here today and you have no clue what to do. Man, I, I have no clue. I don't, I don't know how to do any of this. Pick up a towel. Tie it around your waist. And serve other people. When it seems like there is nothing else to do in your situation or your circumstance, when you're at your wits end, man, I don't know what to do. Show honor to people. Serve people. You cannot go wrong with these two areas. As we kind of close, I want to share a story. I was talking to uh, my college advisor. I, I love him to death. Macy and I went to uh, Springfield to go visit and just hang out and we had lunch with him and we were explaining and talking about some situations that we were dealing with where it was just really, really tough. And we said, man, we just don't know what to do. We've tried everything. And he's really great about just telling random stories and then all of a sudden it connects and you're like, how did you do that? You're a Jedi. But he was sharing stories of pilots in World War II. They were being trained that when their helicopters and when their aircraft went down, and they took damage. As they were spiraling out of control, all of them just continued to pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up until the last possible moment. They tried to just 
pull up on, on, and on everything. And what happened was as they struggled to go against the grain, they continued pulling up until they couldn't. They crashed hard. And time after time, they were just losing all sorts of people in these crashes. They got a team together of researchers, and they said, okay, what, what are we going to do? And there was one instructor. No, it wasn't Tom Cruise. I know everybody's seen the movie, okay? It's really awesome, especially around here. <laughs> but there was one instructor who suggested that pilots lean into the chaos to nosedive when they were going down. And then at the last possible second, pull up. And what they found was that as they nosedive, which was completely against all of the training that had happened previously, they nosedived as they crashed. And they would pull up at the last possible minute and it would create this, this, this air pocket that they could slide into and they would, they would glide to a stop. There were still people who got hurt, right? Planes still crashed. But it was, it was saving lives. More people were surviving these crashes and actually planes were actually salvageable. They, would, they could take parts away, whereas used to, gone. Chris, my, my advisor, he looked at me and he said, nosedive into honor. Imagine how many situations we could change in our lives if we would just nosedive into honor. When we feel like we're going down, get lower. When we feel like we're going down, get lower. Serve somebody who, who, who doesn't deserve it. Don't let a title make you un, uh, unable to give honor to people. Don't let a position ever put you in a spot where you're not honoring other people. Why is all of this important? It's because in this teaching of Jesus, he makes it clear that there is no division between head understanding and life practice. Here's the cool thing about this, that the blessedness that you receive when you honor people is not just for here. It's not just in this life. Man, there's something better that we can look forward to. And honor has kingdom ramifications. So I don't know about you, but I want to show honor to people and, and honor God with how I treat and how I serve other people so that one day I can stand before God and I can take the honor of listening to those words, well done, good, and faithful servant. I want to live a life that honors God and honors other people. It's important. It's so, 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 so key. When you don't know what to do, show honor. When you have nothing and nowhere to go, pick up a towel and serve. Let's pray this morning. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for your word. I thank you that it is still good and it is still true. Lord, I pray for each and every one of us that, Lord, we would be able to take these three areas of, of selflessness, submission, and service, Lord, and we would just be able to ask you in confidence, Lord, what is it that I need to work on? Is it all three? Is it one? It, it, are you calling me into a different one? Are you calling me to learn something new? Lord, I pray for just an openness and an honesty to happen all over this place. Lord, that we would be able to see what honoring other people will do in, in communicating your love for them. And Lord, we know that when we honor people, when we honor uh, uh, those in authority, when we honor people that we need to, even when it doesn't feel right and even when it doesn't feel good, we know that we are honoring you because of it. So Lord, I pray that we would be able to see the fruit in honor. We would be able to take this value and really make it the, the, the core of everything that we do. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord. We ask that you would just seal this time together. 
Lord, that we, we would just be able to take what, what you have spoken, Lord, and, and apply it in every single aspect of our life. We love you. It's in Jesus' name that everybody said, amen.